All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and let's do part two of the video discussing um, DI boxes, impedance, and um, balance and unbalance, you know, signal transport, and just kind of chatting about some various subjects here um, and get our heads around it a little bit. Um, so in the first part, I talked about uh, the various signal levels as well as the methods of transporting that we use, balanced versus unbalanced versus uh, unshielded, you know, like speaker cable as well, NL4, various types of cables that we use. I also discussed uh, kind of an analogy trying to get uh, uh, some clarity on high impedance versus low impedance. High impedance is kind of like um, if this is the signal sending and the a high impedance output would be like a long stick for very little motion on the, uh, for the same amount of energy here, the same amount of strength or, and motion in my hand, which we'll say is the power or the wattage that is being generated. If that is sent through a high voltage, low current output, high impedance output, then um, we would see a lot of swing, a little bit of resistance will drag it down. And you'll see that with high impedance outputs, if you put, plug them into a low impedance input, it'll drag down that voltage and um, um, you'll get some, you know, you'll lose some level there. Um, low impedance is a lower voltage, higher current, and they do kind of balance out. So if you have the same, the they trade off. So uh, if you have a voltage of 10 and a current of 1, then your wattage would be 10. And if you have a current of 10 and a voltage of 1, your wattage will also be 10. So it's just uh, a different uh, distribution of transmitting the same amount of energy. So I've got a, a little setup here where I've got a pink noise signal source. It's coming out of that. It's going into this sound tools mic switcher swapper. Um, I've got a little picture I drew of how it's wired. I'll show you there. And it come, the signal comes out and it goes into switcher swapper and then it goes into the input of the DI and then out of the DI into the mixer. And then when you switch the switcher swapper, the signal will now go into the output of the DI and come out of the input of the DI and then go into the mixer. So we have the ability to listen to this DI box um, run in reverse. And what happens is, uh, since instrument levels are fairly high levels and microphones are very low levels, when we take and run a direct from an instrument or a instrument amp output into this mic level, the levels, these consoles that we use are typically built a lot for a mic level, this very low level, or we want to get all these things into the same level range. Um, another example might be, even if the console will handle a very high level input from um, a line level out, and you can just put the pad on, having a 10 or 20 or 50 microphones going down an audio multi-core cable and all the signals are down in that minus 50 to minus 80 dB range, minus 60 dB range, very low level. And now you're running this minus 10 or zero dB super hot signal down. It's going to want to cross talk into the other signals and it's just kind of unwieldy. You know, a mispatch, you've got something that's so much louder intermingled with a lot of things that are very quiet. So getting everything into that same uh, lower range is beneficial. Um, oops. So we want to get uh, a DI box is a great way of doing it. It takes a high impedance input and then it sends out a low impedance, lower voltage output. So we plug our instrument into there and also the DI box have the advantages of ground lift and balancing. Okay, so what we're going to do is first we'll listen to the signal that is being sent. And then you can also see on the scope here, as I bring it up, and I will gain this up a little bit. And we can see the signal there. That's what's being sent into the, the DI box. Now, this 
is what's coming out of the DI box. So it's reducing the level of that signal uh, considerably. I'm going to go ahead and gain that up. And that's at 50 millivolts per division. And I'm using about a single division, a little more. And then we'll go and look at this. And at 50 millivolts per division, it's using the entire screen. Um, if I drop this down to 500 millivolts per division, I get about the same thing. So it's about a 10 to 1 um, uh, trans uh, transformer. And if we look at that with the stick, a 10 to 1, if this was 10 times the length of this, and we had a little fulcrum right here, then there's our high impedance input over there, our, our high impedance output of our guitar or amp or whatever. And then the amount that this moves here would be our low impedance, um, higher current um, microphone preamp. So what happens if we hook the DI box up the other way? Oh, first, before we do that, why would we want to hook the DI box up all the way? Well, the DI box is great for coming out of a console and you could daisy chain a bunch of them together and then have, take four of them, put them together, run a quarter inch uh, into one um, out of the console and then uh, connect all the rest of them and have four mic level outs. You drop that over on the riser and if you have a camera crew coming in, they're going to love you because they have all these mic level outs if you don't have a dedicated press box. Um, I've got this Zoom player here that um, is fairly old and it's got a couple built-in mics and a couple uh, XLR inputs and I went to go ahead and put this up and record shows that I was doing and um, the mics work great and these are mic level only. You cannot pad these down enough to not distort. You could turn a console down to like one and a half and then turn this all the way down to like five, you know, on its level out of a hundred. And then it's okay, but it sounds like crap. So um, a couple DI boxes come out of the console. I came out of the insert sends with quarter inch jacks into DI boxes, out of the DI boxes. It dropped the level down, plugged it into here. Boom, it works perfect. Um, sometimes you want to balance a line. You're going to send it over a long distance and... Um, um, and also, like I talked about before, high impedance outputs don't like to be loaded down. So if you have a high impedance output or a quarter inch output, getting it to a low impedance, higher current output so it doesn't get drugged down. Um, outputs that get drugged down, um, you can hear them. You put a Y adapter on the output of it and plug it into the input of a console or input of whatever you're going to do and plug it into something else. And if you unplug it and the level's dropping on that wide out, um, that's not good. I won't get into that too much. Let's go ahead and look at this. Oh, why would we want to run a DI box the other way? Um, let's say you want to take a microphone and plug it into a guitar amp. If we're in effect, you want to hear what it sounds like, or you have an, um, an old PA head, a vintage PA head, or you've got a, a, some old mixer or something that has a microphone quarter inch input that, um, if you take a, a regular balanced line modern mic, put an XLR to quarter inch, low impedance output mic, you plug it in, you end up turning that gain up all the way, you're getting a bunch of noise, you're not getting all the gain you need, or everything's out of whack. Um, running a DI box backwards um, is one way to solve that. Uh, this only works with transformer DI boxes. Active DI boxes have electronics, they will not take the signal the other way, but a transformer is just two coils of wire and it doesn't care if the input or the output there it doesn't care which way the energy goes through it which way the electricity goes um, so let's go ahead and watch what happens when we hook this up the other way so there's our initial signal which is about one square there and that's the output of the di box in its conventional set now if I flip this the other way, there's the original signal, and there's the new output of the DI box. And let's go ahead and take a look, I'll drop this down here. That's about two volts per division. And 
five. So uh, we're seeing about a four to one the other way. We're not seeing the you know that huge drop in level that we saw coming the other way because the output of the DI box is now high impedance and we're running it in. Even though we're getting level gain, we're also running this output into a console, which is low impedance input. So we should see more gain. Um, oh, we could check that out. There we go. Okay, so there's our output of the DI box with into the high impedance input of the scope, which can handle it. And that's five volts per division. And now what we'll do is look at what's going into the DI box to look at the amount of gain that we're sending to it. Or I see the signal we're sending to it. And there it is. And that's 500 millivolts. So it's a little more than 10 to one, maybe 12 to one, which is what we saw. Um, so that's great. So we got an example too of what happens when because we're using the DI box backwards and we're driving into the low impedance input and coming out of the high impedance output, we're getting all that gain. But since we plug that high impedance output into the low impedance input of the um, console, um, it's uh, collapsing it back down again. It's dragging it down. So what's happening is we have this high impedance output. We have a, a low impedance input here that's got a good amount of resistance to it. And when it's driven off a low impedance output, we're all good. This has got some drag to it. Now we've taken this high impedance output, which wants to do this when it's plugged into the scope or when it's sitting in open air and hitting a high impedance input. And we're plugging into a low impedance input and it's trying to do it. And this is offering enough resistance to where this can't hit full swing. Um, Maybe not the greatest analogy, but um, um, hopefully enough to grasp it and then also, you know, study it and figure it out and learn it um, for real. All right. I think that's enough. DI boxes used backwards. Um, isolation, transformer. Yeah, transformers are cool. It just coils a wire. Just coil a wire near a coil a wire. If you have if you take a, a wire and you coil it around a hundred times with another wire right next to it a hundred times There's a hundred on this and a hundred on this Whatever you send in Will come back out the other side almost exactly the same or very similar um, If the high quality transformer well, you get a little lost through it, but it'll come out if you put a hundred coils here and ten coils here or a thousand coils here and a hundred here we have ten times as many then a high voltage coming in here, you'll lose, you'll lose, it'll come out one tenth the voltage and 10 times the current. So it'll convert it from a high impedance, high voltage to a low impedance, high current. And then the opposite, if you turn that around the other way and you have 10, 100 coils here going to 1,000 coils, then it'll bump it up 10 to 1, so 1 to 10. It'll get 10 times bigger coming out. This is going to have a lot of voltage and uh, less current. Um, and this will have to have, this can have lower voltage and more current. And then you can have one coil of wire and then take two more coils of wire and wind all three of them together. And you can have one in and two outs or three outs. And you lose a little bit, but just the fact that you can coil some wire together and transfer energy from one to the other and the wires never electronically touch is super cool. All right, that was just a kind of a fun chat I wanted to do and hope you enjoyed it. So thank you for hanging out and I hope you found this video and others that I do interesting and informative and check out soundtools.com. Take a look at the products I personally designed, some solutions for the pro audio industry, uh, analog over Cat5, a bunch of testers um, and other useful tools. Um, ratsound.com has got our sales department, rental department, install department. Uh, we sell a wide variety of pro audio and AV gear. We do installations, small to large, and we do rentals for everything as small as local clubs and backyard parties, all the way up to Coachella Festival and artists like Pearl Jam, Jack Johnson, Blink-182. 
And thanks for hanging out.